Hello everyone and welcome to another interesting episode of Child Healthpedia podcast. I'm your host Dr. Amulya and today we have Dr. Shravanti over here. Hello Dr. Amulya. Hi Dr. Shravanti. Uh, very nice to have you over here for today's podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so Dr. Shravanti is a fetal medicine consultant at Rainbow Children's Hospital Financial District. She obtained her fellowship in fetal medicine and high risk obstetrics from Simar Institute Kochi. Her areas of interest are fetal echocardiography, prenatal diagnostic and therapeutic procedures. Thank you so much for making it here today. Thank you for inviting me actually. Yeah. And uh, let's hope it goes well. <laughs> Who exactly is a fetal medicine expert? Fetal medicine is a new branch of perinatal medicine. Here where we deal with your unborn baby. We are in common term known as doctors of your unborn. We'll be taking care of your baby uh, from day one, that is the conception, from conception till the delivery. So basically we do our specialities, it could be either obstetrics or radiology. And after that we go for subspeciality, which is the fellowship in fetal medicine. And that's how we become fetal medicine specialists. Here we actually deal, we in a common term we are called the doctors of unborn. Mm -hmm. So we'll be taking care of the babies from the day of conception to the delivery. So that is what actually fetal medicine is. The baby inside the womb is called fetal. So we are called fetal medicine specialists. Okay. And getting a glimpse of the baby in the womb is one of the most beautiful thing for a mother. Uh, apart from just looking at the baby, which of course is a magical experience, why else are scans important during pregnancy? Actually, this whole journey of the pregnancy is mm -hmm. really very special for the parents. Right. So the ben there are a lot of benefits mm -hmm. in the scan. Definitely doing scans actually very essential during the pregnancy. So the scans help us to know the viability of the pregnancy, that is whether the baby is alive or not. Mm -hmm. And it gives in details about your pregnancy. It will tell us the information about your estimated date of delivery how the structures of the baby is, that is any defects are present in the baby or not, in the growth, general growth of the baby. Yeah, so like you heard from the fetal expert herself, there are a lot of benefits of getting scanning done during pregnancy, but still parents have this doubt now, is it safe uh, for doing so many scans during pregnancy? Because sometimes it can be overwhelming for the mother as well, getting repeated scans done during her journey. Definitely scanning is absolutely safe in pregnancy, mm -hmm. even the transvaginal ultrasounds which are done in the early pregnancies. Mm -hmm. Scanning is not at all harmful, unlike x-rays in CTs. Yeah, so you know it's absolutely safe and it's really important also to get the scans done because apart from just looking at the baby like Dr. Shravanti has said, there are various other things which are looked at during the scans like the well-being of the baby, the growth of the baby, if all the parts of the baby are okay. So do not hesitate if your doctor recommends for you to have repeated scans done, it's for the well-being of the baby. Yes, definitely. If you are in need, Usually, there are only four scans that we do in a, for a regular, mm -hmm. normal, uncomplicated mother. Mm -hmm. But if you warrant or if your baby warrants an extra scan, please never hesitate in getting an extra scan done. That is not at all going to harm your baby. Mm -hmm. So, you know, glad to hear because parents would be relieved now to know that scanning really doesn't harm the baby. That's, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, these days, there's a lot of awareness about Down syndrome. So can you tell us more about it? So Down syndrome is actually a chromosomal disorder where these babies will have an extra pair of 21 chromosome which leads to this global developmental delay in the child causing a very emotional, social and financial impact on the families. So these syndrome, especially the Down syndrome, is commonly present in the babies where the mothers are more than 35 years. That is the elderly mothers they are called. But it doesn't mean that the younger mothers won't have Down syndrome baby. So screening for Down syndrome is something that we are following universally these days. So it has to be done so that financial, emotional stress can be avoided in the families. So how is the screening done uh, for the Down syndrome specifically? So Down syndrome screening is usually done during your third month scan, mm -hmm. which is called an NT scan. In this scan, we uh, see for the general structure of the babies and we date the pregnancy. And on top of that, uh, along with that, we do a blood test called first trimester screening test. Mm -hmm. 
so in this if the baby falls in the high risk or the low risk category is being characterized and if the baby falls in the high risk category then we give and go ahead with the further diagnostic tests which are called amniocentesis or cvs and that will confirm whether the baby has a down syndrome or not so initially probably the screening would be done through an array of uh, tests and scans and if there's a risk of a mother going to deliver a down yes. baby probably you would confirm it yes. by amniocentesis so yes. what exactly is amniocentesis amniocentesis is a diagnostic test where we not only do to rule out down syndrome there are many other genetic causes many infections and uh, chromosomal things that can we can diagnosed during an amniocentesis it is some a small kind of needle that we insert in the mother's womb mm -hmm. without touching the baby's parts and the placenta and just take out the fluid which is present around the womb and send it for testing this womb carries the baby's dna so that gives us the information that what we need Okay. Then you know it's a needle which is going to be inserted. So is it safe, or uh, are there risk of harming the baby? Would you know that would be the question which a mother would come up and ask. It is absolutely safe, mm -hmm. one thing, and it is painless, and it is just an OP procedure. We don't even give anesthesia or anything like that. It is just like a small prick what you have for a TT injection. It is that painless. So it is just an OP procedure. It is the prep that is going to scare the parents, mm -hmm. but definitely not the procedure. It hardly takes like five to ten minutes to finish the procedure. If it is done in good hands and experienced hands, it, everything will be fine. So that's quite reassuring for parents. Yes. Okay. So God forbid, but if you know in the scans or through the test something is detected, then the mom guilt creeps in that did I do something wrong? because of which my baby has these defects so what do you advise so that is actually a very difficult time mm -hmm. for the family knowing that their unborn is having some defect and right. they are going to give birth to the baby mm. and uh, it's not easy at all it is not at all easy at all for the baby to, uh, for the family to uh, take that up right so it is quite difficult and what the mother in majority of the cases we cannot detect the cause mm -hmm. in majority of the cases the doc the cause is very difficult to discover because there will be multifactorial and there are many causes leading to this problem it could be a genetic cause a chromosomal cause some infections and sometimes the cause can be unknown mm -hmm. so vast majority we cannot detect and the mother should is not at all in large 99.9% .9 the mother is not at all involved in ha the baby having a defect. Glad, glad you said that because you know the finger straight goes to the mother if something goes yeah, wrong with the baby. Because yeah. of the social stigma that right. we have, you didn't eat well, yeah. you didn't take care well, you are stressed out more, that's why the baby right. is it. Those are not the reasons for baby having a defect. The baby will be having a defect because it has been much formed much earlier than the mother knew that she was pregnant. So it has been decided. That is the reason why the, this baby is like this. So mother self, don't self blame yourself and you know, community as a part also plays a role in supporting these mothers because uh, certain things are not in the hands of parents themselves. It's multifactorial like uh, Dr. Shavanti has said. You cannot pinpoint to one cause and say that this could have caused the defects in the baby. That's true. It is multifactorial and couple, even the father, the mother, they are not actually responsible for these conditions for the baby to have. So, but then this is scary, like, you know, it happens for the first pregnancy, then the parents might think, oh, it might happen again if we, you know, if the mother conceives again. So, what are the risks of them having a child with such defects during the next pregnancy if they go ahead with it? So, first, the the cause in this pregnancy has to be diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Why this has happened? Is there any underlying cause for this thing or is it is just an incidental and accidental thing that has happened? Mm -hmm. Once if we diagnose the cause, then we can construct a plan for the next pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So, but before the pregnancy, the couple have to attend a preconceptional counseling with your fetal medicine consultant. So the plan will be given and if any extra tests are warranted in the parents, they have to be done before conceiving and additional precautions and any additional prenatal vitamins they have to take, all this will be advised and then they can go ahead and have, can conceive. 
Yeah, so uh, I think this is also something positive for parents as uh, it's not that if you have one child with a defect, the second child also would have... Uh, no, you know, if there thing. are only related to the genetic causes, right. mm -hmm. there can be, a, again in the next pregnancy, they can have it. But if there is not a known genetic cause and we couldn't determine any cause, and it is just an accidental thing that we can think it is. And they can happily go ahead and plan for the next pregnancy without any... Yeah, so basically like you said, it counts down to what exactly could have caused the defect which would predict how the next pregnancy would be. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. definitely. So as a fetal medicine expert, what are the other things which you usually do? Apart from scans, there mm -hmm. are many things that we yeah. do. Mm -hmm. So firstly, we conduct uh, this preconceptional counselings. So these are for the couple who have a known genetic disease in the family, mm -hmm. especially in the South India. We have many consanguineous coming up to us because they get married in the relatives and we give them certain tests and tell them how much percentage of genetic disease they can actually give them to the child and in diagnosing any known or unknown genetic diseases what they are carrying on that is one thing we can do. We offer them invasive and both non-invasive and non-invasive prenatal tests. And therapeutic procedures will be done by us like amnio reductions, fetal reductions in multiple pregnancies and many fetal surgeries also can be conducted. Yes. That's a lot more than the regular scans which parents would be thinking that a fetal medicine expert would do. Thanks for coming over here and educating the parents regarding this new field or new dimension of uh, the fetal medicine expert. Thank you so much for making it here today. Thank you so much for having me Amulya. Yeah. Thank you.